Hello all. Hope you are doing well. Today is Wednesday, April 15th, tax day or should be tax day. Um, here I am midweek again, uh, trying to just kind of touch base with you all and see how you're doing. Um, been kind of a different type of week. I hope all of you have been able to go in and look at the services we did this past Sunday. Um, four services for Holy Week, and um, that was that was interesting. It was, I mean, it was it was good. It was good to be able to see some of you, and um, good to be able to um, say hi to you. But um, just thought I would uh, go on and kind of just say hi. And I wanted this is the week that I was supposed to be at a pastors conference. So. Um, Obviously, just like everything else, that got canceled. Um, but they are doing it online, which it's been pretty good. So um, the last couple days, uh, Kim has had off of work. So I have been over here at the church watching it on through my computer. And then I put it on the big screen there for um, Junior Church TV to um, be able to watch that. So that's what I'm doing. Um, my brain is kind of full right now of all the information that I've been getting. Uh, it's like trying to drink out of a water fire hydrant. So, um, but yeah, it's been good. And so, um, anyhow, if you have not heard, uh, we do have a YouTube channel now as well. That's Heritage Christian Union Church. And so, yeah, that's... Um, that's our channel for that, and it has the little emblem, same emblem as the, church, the Facebook page does. So you should be able to go back even um, on Sundays afternoons after I get done. I hope to be able to put it over on YouTube um, and do that sort of thing as well. So, um, But it is cold today. It's much colder than it has been. Um, we even had a pretty heavy rain snow there while I go so that was kind of crazy but um, I wanted to remind you anybody that's watching this um, <laughs> thanks Neil yeah about time to shave my head because uh, the barber shops are not open so I might have to go buy some clippers uh, that was one of the first things at the at the uh, drive-in the other day that's one of the first things one of the ladies said to me Ken needs a haircut so um, yeah, um, but anyway, um, yeah, if you are watching this from Heritage, then we want to remind you that online giving is now available through Venmo and PayPal, and if you are watching this from another church, we want to remind you to give to your church, give to your local church. Um, they're still trying to figure out how to pay their bills. They're still trying to figure out how to pay the things that they need to do. So if you are still working or if you're even getting an unemployment check, I would encourage you to still give to your local church, whatever, wherever that's at. I know that they would deeply appreciate it. So um, with all that being said, again, this is Wednesday night. Uh, I'm just going to read a little scripture to you. Again, if you've watched the last few Wednesday nights, I just basically get online to touch base with you all so you can see my beautiful face <laughs> and... Uh, then um, then I just read some scripture, not really a Bible study per se. Um, some of them have been a little bit more in-depth than the others, but again, uh, it's mainly just Bible reading, just so you can see me. This Sunday at 10.30, um, we are going to have a guest singer that's going to be singing, so that'll be kind of nice to have uh, singing with um, my message on Sunday. And it was suggested that maybe I can... They, everybody I've talked to says they like the idea of me just sitting down chatting with you guys. So I'm going to still do that, but I'm going to do it inside the sanctuary because we did have one suggestion that, hey, it would be nice for to maybe do it one Sunday inside there just so people can see the sanctuary because they haven't been out and been able to see it. So we're going to do that on Sunday, Lord willing. And then, like I said, we're going to have 
Rod Motter is going to be joining us singing a couple songs. And so looking forward to that. But um, All right. I'm going to be reading this evening out of Luke chapter 19. Um, and as I read it, I've got a few thoughts. But uh, again, I just thought I would read it and kind of go from there. So Luke 19, starting with verse 1. So says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and, who was and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead, and he climbed up in the sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your, stay at your home. So he made haste, king came down, and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He is going to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to the ha your house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Um, nothing real theologically profound in this per se, but just some thoughts I had through this. I don't know. It's obvious that... It means something because Zacchaeus was small. We all know that song about when Zacchaeus climbed the old the tree and all of that. But I wonder if, first of all, Zacchaeus was probably not a well-liked man. He was a tax collector. And he was short. So I'm guessing people made fun of him, unfortunately. Um, because they. I don't think that Luke would have put this in here if that wasn't a necessity. To know, and I get that he climbed up the tree to be able to see because he was shorter. So he had some faults, and and I think to myself, everybody was kind of upset with Jesus because he hung out with Zacchaeus. But I kind of question this. I'm wondering if anybody had ever tried to share Jesus and his love with Zacchaeus. And as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus probably realized that he was not the most well-liked man. He probably realized that he was short in stature. He might have even been a little bit self-conscious about it. And I asked myself a couple things on this. First of all, I think, what is there in our life? What is there in your life that maybe you're self-conscious about? Maybe you have a position at work to where you don't necessarily make great friends. If you're in a position of leadership, you probably don't have a whole lot of friends because you have to make tough decisions sometimes. Or, um, or maybe you have a something that's maybe physically wrong with you, a physical ailment. And maybe you, that makes you feel less adequate. Or or maybe you just have a learning disability. Or maybe you just have whatever that may be. We all get self-conscious and are self-conscious about certain things. Um, there's things that we try to hide. Uh, if you don't believe that, um, again... There's a lot of ladies right now that are trying to hide because they uh, are they got so much gray in their hair and they can't go to the hair salon to go get it fixed. They're self-conscious, or at least they like it better with darker, and I get that. But the cool part is, in the midst of Zacchaeus' faults, biggest one being that he's a sinner, Jesus comes to him and hangs out with him. Jesus comes to him not while Zacchaeus was tall, not while Zacchaeus was well-liked, not while Zacchaeus was the most popular person in the 
community, that he looks up and it says, make haste, come down, I must stay at your house. I don't know, some of you may be, and it's easy during this time, to start feeling sorry for yourself about one thing or the other. Somewhere about, maybe you're starting to say, well, I, um, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not comfortable with that. Maybe some of you are just not comfortable in your house. You love your family, but you need some time away. Some of you are just sitting there and eventually Satan starts digging in and starts sitting there and he starts telling you, you're not good enough. You're not well enough. You have all these inadequacies, all of these faults. And you know what? Maybe you do, but you know what? What we see as faults makes you unique. Um, as most of you know, I help with people with disabilities and a lot of times people are scared by these people or even a little nervous around these people, but I don't see them as faults. I see them as uniqueness. And if you don't believe me, start hanging out with some of those people. You'll see they have a lot more love than a lot of us do. We all, if we're not careful, can start feeling sorry for ourselves during this time. We can start getting down when the sun's not shining. We can start focusing on what we're not good at or what we don't have or what we can't be doing. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus is still saying, make haste. I'm ready. I'm ready to be here with you. I'm ready to be here with you. First and foremost, if there's anybody watching that has not ever became a Christian, I want to invite you to say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my faults. Forgive me for my failures. And help me to be brand new in you. But those people that are Christians and Satan's trying to get in and trying to mess with your head a little bit and tell you you're not good enough or you're not adequate enough or you're not good enough at something or looking a certain way or doing a certain thing, Jesus is still right there with you. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to be the professional at sports. You don't have to be the smartest cookie. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be tall. You don't have to be tan. You don't have to be whatever it is that you think that you wish you had. That, that really doesn't matter. What matters is that you have Jesus. Zacchaeus was short and not liked, but he was loved by Jesus. Some of you right now maybe are facing rejection of some sort. Some of you right now are maybe facing ridicule of some sort because of a decision you had to make one way or the other. Some of you maybe are not feeling very well loved right now. But I tell you, Jesus loves you. And that's all you have to hold on to. Because if Jesus loves you, that's everything. The cool thing is, and you're still going to get people that complained as they did as Jesus started hanging out with Zacchaeus and uh, all of that. But uh, again, go back there at the bottom of her and the verse 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We, we get hurt. We get down. We get discouraged. We may feel that feeling of rejection. But here's the thing. I wonder if Zacchaeus was feeling rejection because of his tax collector. He probably was feeling rejection. Being short, he might have felt rejection. But you know what? That feeling of rejection that you feel that comes in sometimes when somebody says a comment or maybe makes you think, what did they mean by that? Or maybe they didn't mean anything by that, but your Satan starts messing with your mind thinking, hey, I wonder. In that midst of rejection, there's somebody that can understand that rejection. Last week, we just celebrated Holy Week. Jesus on Palm Sunday was celebrated and worshiped and saying, 
Hosanna, Hosanna. But my midweek, they were saying, crucify him. Now that is rejection. All because they was, he was not doing what they thought he should have been doing. He did not look the way that he thought they thought he should have looked. He did not act the way that he they all thought that he should be acting. So if you're feeling inadequate, if you're feeling rejected, know that Jesus is right there and understands and he's there for you. And just like with Zacchaeus, he's saying, come down, come on. I want to hang out with you. So I want to encourage you the next couple moments, just spend some time in prayer. Um, you can mute me. I'm not going to say too much more. Mute me and just spend some time in prayer. When you get off of Facebook, close it up and just spend, go away and spend a couple moments in prayer and just say, Father, I need you. Father, I need you right here and now. I can't do it on my own. I'm going to feel rejection right now. I'm going to feel I'm going to feel inadequate, but I am everything when I have you. So Father, forgive me. Help me not to focus on what I don't have, but help me to focus on what I do have, and that's you. Again, I'm going to shut this off, and I encourage you to just sit and listen and spend some time in prayer. Thank you all for joining.